Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, and I hope that you're hearing me clearly. Uh, thank you uh, and members of your committee for inviting me to this afternoon's hearing uh, and are giving me the opportunity to talk about the work of the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, uh, but I remain grateful for the opportunity to discuss ways in which national parliaments, interparliamentary organisations and the European Parliament can work together to promote peace and security. Uh, as you say, I'm joined by Secretary General uh, Montella, um, and uh, he's had regular exchanges uh, with uh, your, you and your uh, colleagues uh, pr to promote better collaboration uh, between the European Parliament and our organisation. Uh, greater institutional cooperation and understanding has been uh, made possible uh, by the engagement of former leaders from the OSC Parliamentary Assembly who uh, sit as members of your committee, including uh, Tonino Picula, Nacho Sanchez Amor, Isabel Santos, Thierry Mariani and Roman Haider. And uh, if they are able to join us this afternoon, uh, it would be very good to see them. For those uh, who are not so familiar with the work of the Parliamentary Assembly, the work includes frequent discussions and uh, adaptation uh, of uh, resolutions on affairs related to the Organisation for Security and Cooperation in Europe, fact-finding missions and reports by our special representatives, and indeed reports uh, on uh, elections that we have observed. We bring together the national parliaments of 78 participating states spanning from uh, North America through the eastern um, parts of Russia, Central Asia to Mongolia. And our wide membership includes the smaller states of Andorra, Monaco and San Marino. We are therefore an essential platform to reflect the security concern of all European countries. And we work together with parliamentarians from uh, Mediterranean Asian partners for cooperation. All this uh, contributes to support and adds value to the multilateral uh, diplomatic efforts of governments and OSCE institutions in fostering greater security in the three dimensions of the OSCE, political and military, economic and environmental and, pro and promoting human rights. Uh, COVID-19 has impacted on our work as it's impacted on yours. Um, it has led us to adapt uh, to uh, these circumstances. We haven't been able to meet in person since February 19, but uh, our annual session will uh, take place nevertheless, albeit in a reduced format. And we've had a large number of meetings, webinars, committee meetings, uh, on during during this period. Uh, it's been frustrating because we have witnessed the disruptive effect of the pandemic on our societies and our interstate relations. However, much of our focus remains on the management and settlement of armed conflicts that have flared in many corners of the OSCE area and the European neighbourhood since the end of the Cold War. Uh, and all this has been aggravated by COVID. Uh, since last year, uh, we've seen a serious escalation in the conflict over Nagorno-Karabakh into a full outbreak of hostilities in and around Ukraine. Armed clashes and military standoffs uh, continue, uh, and the worst conflict on European soil since uh, the former Yugoslavia, with over 13,000 people having lost their lives, a quarter of them civilians. And in the occupied territories of Georgia, there are problems around the border, abductions and illegal detentions impact on the daily lives of citizens. And despite great work by OSCE, uh, the settlement of Transnistrian conflict has stalled. Despite all this, we have seen through the conflict cycle, parliamentary dialogue remains a crucial tool to facilitate reconciliation and conflict resolution. Our position enables us to act as a bridge and be flexible enough uh, to participate in a wide range of initiatives. Our Lionsweiler seminars are usually held annually, but help of the German Bundestag are an example of ways we seek to build trust between parliamentarians, Russians and Ukrainians, members from Armenia and Azerbaijan. 
and all our members are anxious to do what they can to advance peaceful settlement of conflicts. Participation in the Parliamentary Assembly means each of our parliaments can count on a roster of members with expertise and understanding of the founding principles who find themselves in an advantageous position to support conflict prevention work. We've got an important role in helping domestic legislation, uh, accommodating ethnic, religious and linguistic diversity and protecting the rights of minorities. That's the kind of early action that can mitigate uh, the risks of outbreak and recurrence of conflicts. And much as we advocate greater resources for preventive actions, we've got to make use of our early warning cap capacities and of the EU's geographical, geopolitical strength. In our national parliaments and in Brussels or in Strasbourg, we can raise the attention of governments, of the media and the public to the threat of conflicts. And we can try to find more durable solutions to transnational uh, challenges such as migration uh, and terrorism. And these are areas that will benefit from exchanges between European institutions and our parliamentary assembly. Uh, raising awareness of the issues in national parliaments, I believe, is a role that you and our assembly have in the sense that uh, the OSCE is not, in my opinion, sufficiently high up the agenda of many national uh, governments. I'd also ask your uh, Human Rights uh, Committee uh, to work closely with our Human Rights Committee to ensure that we support each other's priorities and initiatives. And this can help our governments and relative uh, agencies uh, to uh, draw on information that we can relay from the field. And it will increase the effectiveness of our joint work. Members of uh, your committee, we look at a bleak picture of sustained conflicts and democratic backsliding across the region. It would be simple to blame the failure of OSC itself. The truth is that with clear ambitions and appropriate tools to uh, solve conflicts, the organization remains hostage to geopolitical plays and lacks genuine political will. Hence my appeal that you, uh, we all work to get the OSC up the agenda of national governments. In Belarus, uh, the Parliamentary Assembly has uh, hosted conversations uh, between Ms. Sikhanovskaya, the leader of the opposition and the head of our delegation from Belarus. Um, practical results have been limited and the Ryanair incident and the illegal in interception of uh, a legal passenger flight has dramatically changed the climate in which uh, we are working. Nevertheless, I think we still have to uh, try to get dialogue um, in, reinstated uh, between the parties. But there is a limit to what parliamentary democracy can achieve, and it's the combined pressure of parliamentarians, governments and international institutions that uh, can uh, make a difference. In the case of Belarus, I, and it's a personal view, I hope that uh, the... Uh, leaders of G7 will see fit to uh, uh, invite uh, Svetlana uh, as leader of the opposition to put her case uh, to the very tops of very major governments. And we must continue to uh, exploit um, our political role to generate work in the interest of the OSCE. This is behind uh, our call for action, an initiative which was launched uh, last summer uh, and to the Ministerial Council of the OSCE in December uh, to streamline the experience and the energy of current and former parliamentarians and executive leaders to promote a stronger and more effective and visible OSCE. And uh, your parliament's uh, involvement in these discussions is very welcome. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't address the uh, question of relations with the Russian Federation. Um, our discussion here follows on uh, the heels of Moscow's decision to implement travel bans against European Parliament officials, including your, your president. And as I've already stated, we don't see these as serving the interests of multilateral cooperation. Indeed, they only have an effect, negative effect of raising tensions. Despite all this, Russian parliamentarians have continued to participate in our debates following the illegal annexation of Crimea 
and start of hostilities in the Donbass. Despite their active engagement in our activities, it's very difficult to have meaningful uh, dialogue. Uh, our Parliamentary Assembly has uh, regularly adopted texts condemning actions in Ukraine and elsewhere, and we have raised questions regarding the investigation into the murder of Boris uh, Nemtsov and the treatment of Alexei Navalny. We have maintained objective and unbiased positions, firmly rooted in OSD commitments and our belief that dialogue must be uh, principle-based. And at the same time, we've made several overtures to the Russian sides to help build confidence. Mr Chairman, before I conclude, let me speak a little of the good cooperation we enjoy with the European Parliament in the field of election observation. And you've referred that uh, in your opening. And, of course, we share uh, your desire to see... Uh, not just the European Parliament, but indeed many of our national parliaments uh, regaining the ability uh, to travel and particip participate. The cooperation between the OSCE Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights has established what I think uh, is recognised as a gold standard in international election observation. And despite the challenges, we have uh, been able to mount missions to Montenegro, Georgia, United States, Bulgaria, Albania, and in the coming months, we will go to Armenia and Moldova. All this work helps ensure the universal values upheld by the US, uh, OSCE and the European Parliament are better known, understood, accepted, and, share, and shared. Um, it's in the best interests of our citizens that they live in a world with more democracies to achieve greater equality and civic engagement and to enjoy fundamental human rights. In the field of election observation, uh, we face challenges which require our attention, including disinformation campaigns and the shortcomings of electronic vote, uh, voting and the multiplication of observer, fake observers. They are issues that uh, your members, Isabel Santos and Nacho Sanchez Amor, Amor, highlighted when in the Parliamentary Assembly, and I'm sure that they will uh, continue uh, so to do. Uh, we have another OSC um, former member in the shape of Matteo Matacci, the ODIA director. And... I uh, have uh, tried to highlight a wide range of uh, parliamentary activities um, in the time that's available. There's no time to go into other crucial issues such as migration issues, the fight against terrorism and the impact of climate change, the rise of intolerance or combating corruption. But Secretary General uh, Montella and I look forward to discussing these as well as any other issues of common concern or interest with you. Lastly, uh, Mr Chairman, um, may I be allowed a, a personal com comment, not as president, but as a United Kingdom parliamentarian. It's a pleasure to be in your European house, albeit virtually. In my time, I've attended many inter-parliamentary meetings in the European Parliament, and I regret so much that my country's departure from the European Union has ended that. My regret that our flag no longer flies outside your building. I can only hope that the provisions of the agreements that have been reached between us, uh, you and ourselves, will ensure real, meaningful parliamentary cooperation to ensure the uh, relationship uh, between the United Kingdom and the European Union remains strong. And I wish you and the European Union well in your endeavours in working for a strong, free and democratic Europe. Thank you for allowing me, but I'm afraid it is not an opportunity which I could let pass.